a wonderful God. Amen. Yes, he's a loving God. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. We owe it all to him, don't we? <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love him because he first loved us. Amen. Amen. He's the initiator. Amen. That's what we've been talking about, guys. You know, God, he's the initiator of all things. So we can make choices and go down the wrong road. We hate that we would we come to hate that we made our choices. But, you know, we, we're going to talk about <clears throat> choices. You know, God can work all things out, of course, because he's Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's um, omnipresence and he knows all things. Amen. Amen. He's all powerful also. Amen. And he's sovereign. Amen. So he knows all things. So, you know, we do what we do because of who we are. But, you know, if we are in Christ, then we should become a Christ-like. Because that's what he said, you know, that we should be standing before him justly. Amen. Because of the blood of Jesus. It don't mean that we are perfect because we still got this flesh that we are contending with. So we're going to be talking about today, for we're going to be talking about two words. Focus and distractions, okay? That's what we're going to talk about, focus and distraction, because uh, Satan wants to distract us from our faith, amen? amen? But we should be focusing more and more on our faith, amen? But because of the flesh, sometimes all distractions, they do get in the way, you know? So, but before we get started on that, Pam, how has your day been? Very relaxing. Very relaxing. Last month was very busy. So yeah. Today was relaxing. Really nice. That's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Glad to hear that. My day been wonderful. Um, dealing with you know every time you go uptown, we call it downtown. They call it uptown. Which one is it? Is it uptown or downtown? Downtown. Downtown. Can we can say downtown? And for you guys Charlotte who are getting Charlotte, 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 for you guys that are getting offended. That would get offended because we sat downtown and Pam took care of She spoke for you guys. Charlotte says, okay. says uptown. So there you go. Uptown, downtown. But you know what I hate about downtown, uptown? Is the parking. It's so hard to park. You know, especially when you're going to buildings from one building to another building. Not the same building every day. But you have to get there and you got the five parks and all the arrows saying no right turn, no left turn. And, and, and then when you find the building, you got to find parking decks. Now I have a uh, on, on my truck a ladder rack, and I can't go into some of the parking deck because it's mm. too low. And so I got to find me like outdoor parking. The day I had to walk three blocks to get where I had to go, but that was my mm -hmm. exercise. Yeah, it was pitiful, but you know what? I still I enjoyed it. I have to say that I enjoyed the walk. But I sat in the parking lot. Because it was hard for me to get in the parking space. And I fought that for 15 minutes. And then when I finally got out to go and pay for my parking, doggone it said that the park that where I parked at was not vacant at this time. So I had to go back in my truck and find another parking space. Oh and so I did. But this time when I found the parking space, it was right by the exit and everything. And when I went and got out and went to pay for my parking, guess what? I was able to pay for my parking at that particular time. But, you know, the Lord is good. Amen. He's good. Yes, sir. Moses, how have your day been, sir? My day was going good. Speaking of downtown, I'm going to call it downtown. Downtown. So I was downtown. Uh, DT. Not this week. I think it was like <laughs> the last week or week before and I was shooting a video. And I saw this parking spot. And mind you, I look for like handicap. I look for like if there's a meter and all that. Yeah. I ain't see none of that. So I'm parking, <laughs> shooting a video and everything. And once the video was over, I get ready to get in my car to pull off. And I look on my windshield and there's a piece of paper on my windshield. Uh -huh. I'm thinking it's one of them people promoting their little party or whatever. So I was great throw it away. Something said, look at it. How about it was a hundred dollar fine for parking and handicap? Wow. Now I'm sitting here like, where is your either it's faded that was on the road? Because when yeah. I pulled in, I did not see it. Yeah. There was no sign. Yeah. And it was just a ticket for a hundred dollars and I had to pay it. I was mad. I know you was it was one of those Anna Griffin things, those portable on the handicap sign. Somebody moved it. And then they put it there for the cops came. And then right after the cops came, they moved it. They were sort of having a big laugh about it, or whatever so the case might be. But you weren't laughing about it, though, was you most? You know what? It's all good. <laughs> I know it's all good, but $100 is $100. I don't care how you look at it, man. 
That's something. But my day's great, though. I'm blessed. Amen. I'm awesome. Got some Amen. great things in the works. WBND TV, uh, WBND Studios, uh, all the radio shows. I just thank God for everything that's going on, all the people that's in the circle. Uh, God is a blessing. And, uh, yes, he is. Being, you know, a blessing to others shows that God is faithful with you as well. That's so right. That's so right. That's so true. You know, I was sitting down and, um, well, I was reading and um, I had a book, 150 pages. Mm -hmm. And I'm reading it, reading it, and I said, I'm going to read half the book and put it down. And then I went and started reading uh, First Samuel, the first half of First Samuel, and put it down. And I had no TV or nothing on. Pam come home. She didn't say anything. She said, Jay, you sit, you ain't got TV on? I said, no. And um, so the next day, she come home. I had the TV on. And I said, I'm going to read the rest of it the next day, you know, the other half. And I'm sitting down looking at TV and looking at TV. You know, I didn't even get to read not one page the mm -hmm. next day. What? Yep, not one page. And when the pal come home, I thought about it. I say, you know what she said, James, she said, you looking at TV? I said, yeah, I'm looking at TV. Conversation took place. And what came to my mind, I said, um, what did I say? I say, I say that I was, um, what's the word? Um, oh, yeah, spontaneous mm. is the word that I used that day. Because I was looking at TV, but really what I was, I was distracted. Mm. And I said, well, you know what? It's a difference between being distracted and being focused. And I said, you know what? Maybe we need to talk about that. I said, because when you're focused, you can get so much more done than you could when you're distracted. You know, anybody could get distracted, right? But anybody can't focus. Some people can't focus. But I noticed that when I'm focusing, I can do so much more, you know. You know, a lot of times we say, as we walk in Christ, mm -hmm. that I wish my walk was deeper. Mm -hmm. Amen? And so, and we, we never feel like we are giving our all. Mm -hmm. at, at times, sometimes right. you don't feel like you're giving your all. Not never, but sometimes you don't feel like you're giving your all. But and then again, when we think about Ezekiel, I guess we can say we never give our all. Because what did he say when he saw the angels worship? Woe is me. Mm -hmm. And he thought that he knew how to worship right. the Lord. Until he saw the way that the angels put it, you know, mm -hmm. put it down, you know. And he go, he went, woe is me, you know. And so, but we can get so much more done when we are focusing. Now, also, it was a documentary on um, older people and young people. And they said, you know, the documentary was where it was a uh, uh, um, survey. Could young people focus on two, three things at a time and get more done? Yeah, oh than an adult. And the answer to it was the test result said no. Mm. It said no. You you can only focus on one thing at a time. That's it. If you're looking at something just like a camera. If it's focusing in on something, everything else around it is, is blurred out, mm -hmm. right? So if that focus, if that camera is a wide lens, um, um, has a wide angle, lens, angle, angle lens on it, you can see a bigger picture at one time because that camera is focusing in on one thing and that's the spatial mm -hmm. of whatever that lens can take in as a focus, mm -hmm. amen? That's the same thing how our mind, you know, is. If we're doing one thing, that one thing becomes that spatial mm -hmm. focus. No matter how many people in the room, I stand before, I'm looking at both of you at the same time. I stand before a lot of people sometimes when I'm preaching, but still I'm focusing on one thing. The next thing that's coming out of my mouth is what I'm focusing on. I'm not focusing on, even though I can see you clearly, but I'm not really focusing on you. Even if I pick somebody to zoom in on, I'm still thinking about that next thing that's coming out of mm -hmm. my mouth. Because every second, every time I think about something else, I wonder how many people I'm reaching. Guess what? I stop focusing off the, of the next thing that will be coming out of my mouth right mm -hmm. then, right there. So you can only focus on one thing at a time. No matter what you're doing, um, how many times you, you, know, you can multitask. And you, when you multitask, you're still focusing on, on that one that thing, thing at a time. Whatever you're doing, you focus, whatever you're doing. You may move to the next thing. But you're still focusing on that, that one thing. Yep. Yeah. So you, you got a restaurant, you got two trays, and you got to take it to your customers. 
but you got to get to your customers. So you focusing on one step at a time, making sure you don't trip. You mm -hmm. one thing at a time, even though you're multitasking, just like Pam said. God is awesome, God, you know, because we are able to do things that no other creature can do. You know, because he made us be thinking beings. And God's an awesome God. Guys, <clears throat> you can go to Amazon.com and get this book, Herald's Application Commentary for Deuteronomy. And so we are on page 30. I'm going to read from page 34. And it's called Observation. We're going to read from the part that says Observation. Be not afraid when Satan shows his face. And be not dismayed in the presence of the enemy. Know that faith moves mountains. Get grounded in faith and learn to walk by faith and not by your own perspective. Mm -hmm. So what we are talking about, we are talking about focusing. Finding your focus. Be not afraid when Satan shows his face. What is that? That becomes what? A distraction. If you get afraid when Satan shows his face. Be not dismayed in the presence of the enemy. What is that? If you're focusing good at it, go and do something. And you're focusing on how huge that enemy is. You know, you're on a wrestling team or, or a sports team or a track team. Or you're going to bot somebody. You know, uh, people like Muhammad Ali, they didn't focus on their opponent. They focus on putting fear in that opponent mm -hmm. because they wanted to break their focus and take their minds off of whatever it is on and put it on them being uh, intimidated by me. Mm -hmm. I want you to be afraid of me. I want to intimidate you. I want to break your focus even before we start fighting. Wow. And you know, say some people are defeated even before they get started. Right, and that's what that pre, if you break their focus early on, they shook before the, before the game even started. Before they the already game. lost. Yeah, they already lost. Wow. And so that's what that's what it does. You know, when you go to fight or whatever the case might be, the first thing the enemy try and do is break that focus. Know that faith moves mountains, guys. Focus, not distraction. Because when you focus, you get a lot more done. When you're distracted, you get a lot less done. Mm. You know, because you're not focusing. Uh, uh, you're more productive, time productive when you're focusing, and you're less time productive when you're distracted. Now, you spend more time being distracted, if you want your focus to be being distracted, but then that's what you want to be. You want to spend most of your life uh, being distracted, being confused. Uh, making wrong choices, uh, not getting anything done. What do you say? Why put off? Why put off the day? To what what, you, can do what you can do tomorrow? Because the, tomorrow is not promised Ooh, to you. Said that. That's not like something the world made up. It is. It's, it's a, ain't promised. We probably can look it up. We, you know, somebody look that up and mm -hmm. throw that to us. Just put in that and see what kind of quote. Who quoted that? It, it might just be a uh, like a facial expression. Thing, a universal, you know, saying or something like that, you know, or either Buddha or somebody probably said it or somebody. I don't know who said that, but why put off today what you can do tomorrow is because tomorrow is not promised to you. And you hear us say this all the time. I'm going to tell you what I'm absolutely sure of. And I'm going to tell you why I'm absolutely sure of that. And I'm going to tell you what I'm not absolutely sure of all in one thing. One thing I know, that I know nothing about the very next second until it gets here. Oops, there it is. Oops, there it is. Oops, there it is. Oops, there it is. That's all I know. I don't know nothing more than that. You know, and so that's not leaning towards my own preservation, but that doesn't mean that I'm not planning for tomorrow either. Because I'm working on something yesterday, and I'm working on something today. Like we said, God did something in us yesterday so that we can be who we are today. Amen. Amen. And we are who we are today. We're going through so we can be who we will be in the future. And we can also help somebody else be an example of us being a, uh, uh, whether it be a sacrifice or whatever it may be, that people see us. And it draws them to Christ as well. Amen. For their future. We are the salt of the world. We are the lamp 
that's in the window and you shouldn't cover that light up. Don't cover your light up, guys. Be that light. Be that light. Be that salt. And when I sit down to my, don't be out here doing things you know uh, that people will point at and accuse you of not being who you say you are in Christ. You know, don't be like that. You know, now we're not perfect. We know we're not perfect. We know that if somebody hang around us enough, they're going to catch us once in a while saying something we ain't got no business saying or doing something we ain't got no business doing or whatever it might be. You know, in, in this walk, all of us have areas that God is working on. So mm -hmm. that particular area, we somebody may be looking at it doesn't mean that you're not walking to him it's just that you haven't matured in that area or overcome in that area amen and the accuser is always looking and they ain't going to they ain't going to recognize you good they'll see it but as soon as you do one thing wrong oh man it's the greatest thing that could have ever happened to them mm. because they will magnify it they just got through doing the same thing Tell other people just got through doing the same thing, but when you do it, oh man. Yeah, like I said before, we want mercy on us, but we want judgment on everybody else. Ain't that something yours? That's not how Christ works. No, no. He operates in love. Amen. 24-7. That God is. Love. That's right. And to know the Lord, to fear the Lord, is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. God is awesome, God. <laughs> so look. Focus and distraction. Pam Harold, can you read please for me uh, Luke 15 verses 11 through 20? I think, yeah, I think that's it. Then he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger son, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possession with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he, would great, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and mm. before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck That's good right there, and kissed him. That's good right there. That's great right there. Now, so what we see is what? Imagine. You know how kids are there in the halls, they want to do certain things, they want daddy to recognize them as being a man or whatever the case might be. I can only speak from the male perspective about that. And so, you know, I want to do this and I can't do this. I'm the baby boy. I got an older brother. You know what? I don't go out here with my peers, you know, my peers putting in my ears. Well, you know, if you do this, if you do that, then you could do what you want to do. You know, you know you're going to get an inheritance. You know that because that's what we all get. That's This is the time. You know, so they're talking about the time that they're in. You know, go ahead on and get your shell going out there or whatever. So you can imagine the arguments that probably took place between this kid and the father, you know. And the father finally getting to the point where, okay, you know what? Well, you want this? You want your stuff? I'm going to go ahead on and give it to you. You know, uh, with love. He give it to him. You know, he's tired of arguing with him and everything. So he takes it. He goes out there and start living a prodigal life. He start doing whatever it is he wants to do. He's not focusing. See, he's not focusing. He's doing. He's been distracted. 
He been distracted first party with the things that his friends was putting in his ears, the things that he want, the freedom that he want. You know, he want to be able to go out here and do this. He want to go out here and impress his father. Uh, he want to go out here and, 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 and outdo his brother or whatever it was. He want people to love him. He want people to see him for him. And that's he, where we're at right now in the social media area. That's right. That's amen. That's good. You hit that round the nose. Amen. Amen. So what it does, all of that become a distraction to him. It wasn't a distraction. His portion wasn't a distraction to him. His motive was his distraction. Mm. His portion was just material to feed his motive to want to go out there and do what it is, whatever it was that he did. He's distracted. But even while he was distracted, somewhere along the way, he began to focus. That's good. But he, his focus came by him being in a position he didn't want to be in. He may not have even recognized it at first, but now he's recognizing it more and more. So what happens when you focus on something, when you put a camera on something, at first, if it's not automatically focused, it's blear. And then you got to bring it into a focus. And then sometimes you got to get your depth pers uh, uh, um, um, perspective. perspective on that as well. So as he's get as he's getting his focus is coming into a line, you know, he's feeding swines, you know, he ain't got no more money. He broke now. Everybody was loving him, but he ain't got nothing, so ain't nobody trying to help him. You know, he had to go and join certain groups in order to survive. Got a lot of people to do that. They join gangs right. because their their family, their mother and their father is not supporting them. So they go and they join gangs and things. They become even more distracted because they're not getting what they feel that they can get while they're at home. But see, he had everything, but he didn't recognize it at first because his motive. And then he began to feed the swines, the pigs, and all this. And then he began to desire to eat what they're eating because he's hungry, you know. Mm. You no know, tell them what you'll do, you right. know. I don't put nobody down, you know. Hey, Amen. God is awesome, God. But he began to recognize, wait a minute, why am I doing this when my father got servants at home that are eating better than me? Right. You know, so now he's coming into focus. And then he decided to do what? To get up and go back home. That now he's in focus again. It killed his pride too. It killed his sucked pride. His pride up. It sucked his pride. And all of that had to happen in order for him to go from what? Distraction um, to focus. To focus. And when he got focused, he went home and his father saw him afar off and he realized that he had everything he ever could need it right there at home. You know, when you're focusing on something, and if people are seeing that you're serious about doing something, they don't mind helping you. Mm. They'll help you, but when you're distracted, you know, don't nobody want to waste no time with anybody right. who, you know, why well, I want to waste my time over there when you don't even care about what you're doing yourself, so why mm. should I care about you? That's good. The scripture said, God bless the child that has his what? Mm. Has his own, amen? And if you go one step, then he'll go what? Two. Two steps, amen? And that's, you know, that's how we are taught in the word of God. Amen. Pam, go ahead, baby. And it also, you know, because you know we live a twofold life, the spiritual and the natural. So the spiritual is what you describe, but also, I mean, in the natural, but yes. also in the spiritual. The flesh and the spirit. That's the same. I look at the father as being God and look at the prodigal son as being us. Amen. Amen. That's beautiful. That's, that's good because we do get distracted. We get distracted. And that focus, that love helps us to come back into focus, don't it? If you know that that love is there, you got something that, that, that ain't into. But sometimes you don't see love for what it is because you're out of focus. You can't see Because your desires is all on self. Your motives. And the picture that he had. That's right. Was not the picture that he saw. Mm. Amen. <laughs> it was not what he wanted. Sound like Lot, don't it? <laughs> Sound like Lot, don't it? They said the grass is green on the other side. side. Yeah. But Lot, had, Lot was pretty focused, though. He just had to break away. But he stayed focused because he did keep himself clean from the sins of um, Sadia and Gamaria. He did. His wife didn't, but he did. Well, rumor has it yeah. that he was the one at the front gate, so. Yeah. Just yeah, thought. yeah. Just yeah. thought. What you doing at the yeah. front gate? I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. But you know, we want to be at the front gate. We want to be there where we can be seen. That's what we like. You said we wanted to be part of the crowd. Maybe he yeah. might not have been doing everything doing that they it, were but doing, was, but he uh, was part of that crowd. He was there. He was affiliated with what they was there doing. And if he wasn't careful, he would have also been mm. held accountable 
with what they was doing. So now we got to thank to y'all because, you know, it did say if you could find what? At least what? 40, 30, 20, 10, right? Right? Mm -hmm. And he said, but he found, he found Lot and and his family. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Moses, just like, just like Noah, when God wanted to, to, to repent from creating man, he saw one man. That one man was at the gate too. So he was it building, is. he was wow. building a boat. He was building a boat. So, you know, so, you know, yes, he was at the gate and he should have been at the gate because the word tells us to teach the word of God as for me and my house. Mm. And it say, teach when you go to sleep, when you wake up at the gate, at the post, write it on the gate good. and everything. So see, mm. Mark could have been at the gate preaching the word of God, but ain't nobody want to listen, listen to him. Wow, because good. when we go to Revelation, the, the, the second three and a half years, that's going to be two people preaching at the gates of Jerusalem. That's good. And they're going to kill him. And on the third day, they're going to raise up. And when the God say, come, then they'll go back into heaven. So sometimes because you're in a crowd don't necessarily mean that you're mingling with That's that good. crowd. But, you know, people, what do we do? The first thing we do. Judge. God, oh, look God. at him. <laughs> Thank God for his his love. He saw good. Mm. And that's what he focused on. Amen. The Amen. prodigal son, good. Amen. Lot, good. Mm. Noah, good. Yeah. It was all bad around. But he focused on that good. Wow. Yep. So when he see good in you, guess what? It's he gonna potential. focus on it. Mm -hmm. And God said, "Why do you call me good? It's Christ in us that he God did. sees. Mm -hmm. It's something He did in us yesterday. yesterday. Amen. God is an awesome yes. God. Yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. And so it, yeah, and it hurts God when we make the wrong choices and go down down the wrong road. It hurts us when our kids do the same thing. Amen. In his love and kindness. Yes. And in his mercy and patience. And like he said in Romans. Mm-hmm. That's the first chapter. He said he said, Well not patience to you to come into repentance. That's right. That's why right. God is a patient God. He doesn't sleep, he doesn't slumber or anything. What is faith? Faith is about having patience. Why? Because it's about holding on. The race is not given to who? The swift. But it's given to what? The one who endures. Amen. Patience, patience is about trust. It's all about patience. Patience is a virtue. That was my verse first sermon I preached, remember? Patience is a virtue. My very first summer that I preached was that, was called that. Moses, uh, can you read Matthew um, 14, verse 28 through 30? And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Amen. Peter saw Jesus walking. They didn't know who Jesus was walking out there in the water until Jesus told him, Hey guys, I'm not a ghost. Don't be afraid of me. Y'all okay out there? Yeah. How in the world are you able to do what you're doing? Peter said, well, Can I do it too? Jesus said, Yeah. Come on out here, Peter. So Peter focusing on who? Jesus. He's focusing. He's focusing, right? And But when that wind came, what did that wind do? It distracted him. That wind was Peter's enemy. And as soon as he got distracted, he wasn't able to be focused anymore. Peter and he came. began to sink. That fear, right? Mm -hmm. So when Satan come, do not fear Satan. Huh? When despair come, do not fear despair. Huh? When the enemy come, do not fear Fear the enemy. Notice that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Nothing is impossible for God except God will not sin. Amen. So guys, be strong, be encouraged, and focus. Not distraction, but focus. And join us next Monday at 630 on the WBND radio, the number one internet radio plan. The number one internet radio on the planet, praise God. You can be with us at the Tabernacle Trinity Hall Show. I almost tripped it up that time, Moses. I almost did, but I didn't do it. Where our favorite line of the B is in WBND, where we can say to you that you are so beautiful. God bless. God bless. You're listening to the number one internet radio station on the planet. WBND. WBND. This is Gospel Music 24-7. We come to worship 